F you, Bob. <laughs> Jatu Pu, Ma Kuti Bok, Yame Yu, Galaxy Con, Yin Me, Tu Mak Bok, Keku, Tigak Su. And for those of you without Universal Translators, welcome again, friends and fans, to another edition of Galaxy Con Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today we're going back to the final frontier with some very special Star Trek guests. So without further ado, let's grab our bathlets, our knives of honor, and beam them up. First guest is an actor whose credits include Knight Rider, Flash, and Candyman, Day of the Dead. Today he joins us to discuss the role of Klingon Chancellor Gowron and other Trek characters. Please welcome back Robert O'Reilly. Mm, hi. <laughs> I'm here, and where are you? Uh, okay, I will introduce Robert. Okay, he's here behind me. Uh, <laughs> oh, Robert, welcome back. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Hang it in there. Yep. Yep. Me and uh, who who he is. I don't know who he is. He came <laughs> from uh, some foreign land. Anyway, he's, he's my pal. I keep him with me. All yeah. right. Well, there you go. There you go. Robert, welcome back. Glad it's great to see you again. How have you been holding up? Good, good, good. I'm here and you're there and everybody else is where exactly they are. And that's uh, apparently appropriate. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, as always, great to see you back. Let's bring out the rest of our Klingon group. Next, she is an actress whose numerous credits include Virgin River, Da Vinci's Inquest, and Black Summer. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Bator of the House of Duras and other Star Trek roles. Please welcome back Gwyneth Walsh. Hey, I have no puppets. I have no puppets that's to true. offer. I only have this that I got in Germany, but it looks like me. But oh, I that, that's it. the same outfit. So there I we know. go. That's 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 remarkable. Oh, oh well, I hang on to my clothes for a very long time. <laughs> I, nothing wrong with if 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 it fits, play ball. <laughs> Indeed. What if? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, all things considered, in these strange and dangerous times. Uh, very true. Very true. Well, you know, as I, I say often, hey, doing okay is the new awesome. So I agree. <laughs> absolutely. There you go. Well, Gwyneth, is so glad to have you back. Glad to see you in good health and in good spirit. Thank you. You're very welcome. And next, he is an actor whose credits include The Philadelphia Experiment, Decker, and Criminal Minds. Today, he joins us to discuss his various Klingon roles, including Captain Chorus and Next Gen, Korath in a final episode of Voyager, another Klingon, uh, Klingon captain in Enterprise, as well as numerous other Trek characters. Please welcome back Vaughn Armstrong. Oh, you do that so well, man. You are the star here. Oh, great. Now you guys, you guys were the ones in the in, in the had to sit in the makeup chair. We'll get to that in a second. But Vaughn, how are you, sir? You know, I'm doing well. Gwyneth, I have one of those uh German little dolls of myself. Two of them actually. You got My two? Wife broke both of them. Not on purpose, but uh I came back one day and somebody said, showing somebody one of them. She said, uh, hey, uh, did somebody glue that head back on? I said, Chris. Oh, I, I have not been decapitated yet. I, uh, yeah. just, oh, it might be one day. Anyway, oh, hi, perfect. folks. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, Vaughn, welcome back. Glad to have you. Everything is well in your world besides somebody doing a, a voodoo doll treatment on your dolls? Yeah. There's a couple of things I wish might be better. But other than that, life is good. <laughs> oh, so glad to hear it. Welcome back. A pleasure as always. And speaking of good things, he is an actor whose body of work includes Quantum Leap, Highlander, and Zorro. Today, he comes back to talk about the role of General and later Chancellor Martok, his Changeling duplicate, and other Star Trek roles. Welcome back, J.G. Hertzler. Oh, sorry, I was in the middle of a meeting. So, so, so sorry, everyone. Oh, oh, I forgot off my hat. I had my hat on my hat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sing the song with you all later. I'll be back. That's yes. better. Hello. The other one, you look like you were about to sink. You have to change your <laughs> accent think. with each hat, though. I'm sinking. I'm sinking very quickly. Thank you, uh, Vaughn. <laughs> uh, I do have my Batman's hat here, though. Oh, and it's a it's a big bat. Oh. Mine is as as Renee said. Mine's bigger. 
Yeah. I, 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 as, as far as the show went, it always was. It was. <laughs> uh, JG, how you doing, boss? Yeah, well, I'm glad you know the order of uh, the, the relationship here. You're calling me the boss. <laughs> and now I'd like to sing one of my favorite numbers as the boss. The, it was the E Street Band. Um, uh, I can't... I, 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 I'm so old, I can't remember how to play the guitar. All the band. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> it was how you're doing, but as always, it looks like you're doing fabulous. I've had too much to eat today. I mean, drink. Eat, 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 eat. eat. <laughs> uh, well, JG, welcome back. I uh, guess welcome back to the GalaxyCon virtual stage. I love it. Always... That was perfect, Patty. Welcome back, I guess. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> like I say, you 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 inspire me as always. Welcome back, everyone, to the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Our team is going through the chat room right now, pulling out the uh, questions for you. In the meantime, I just like to throw this out and feel free to pull from any aspect of your Star Trek career because between you all, you've done so many characters. A show like Star Trek, of course, has a lot of challenges: uh, challenges of makeup, challenges of on the set, challenges of effects. So, what was for each of you? the craziest day you experienced on a Star Trek set? Working with Bob O'Reilly. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's a JG, because I know what JG's answer is. So well, go with JG. I have to think, you know. You know, I watched I'm in movie. California, so I have to think a little bit more than I anybody else. Was, I, I, watched, I watched a couple episodes of DS9 last night with my daughter. She had I had never seen Way of the Warrior, so I watched it. Bob was brilliant in it. Vaughn wasn't in it. Um, uh, <laughs> but, I should but have I been. This, um, I watched also Apocalypse Rising, which is where Andy Robinson, as Garrick, is speaking to his father figure and who's dying. And he's very sensitive, fantastic, sensitive speech that only Andy Robinson can deliver. It was fabulous. But I was sleeping right behind him on the set uh, because it was a 20-hour day. Mm -hmm. And I was there, and I, in the middle of his speech, theres I was told later there was a... <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the next vision I see after... I was in deep sleep. The vision, John, John. Could I could I get through the speech once, please? Just once. <laughs> you laid on the cut. Uh, yeah, cut. What's that sound? What's that hideous gurgling sound? <laughs> anyway, uh, that was the weirdest day because you never ever fall asleep on a set while it's shooting. You no, know? that's what your that's what your trailer's for, <laughs> not yeah. on the set. Trailer, trailer. Yes, yeah. I know. I you don't have. even know her. Bob, do you have? <laughs> hey, put a bum. I, 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 well, I've got one, one, one quick one. It, it was uh, and and a very long one, but I, I don't know. I'll make it quick too. But uh, it, I was on the set and we, we had our, our ray guns out and um, uh, 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 and. and uh, Whatever they're called, but I call it a ray gun because I grew up in the days of the ray guns. And so I, I pulled out my ray gun, and and uh, all of a sudden the director went, "Cut, cut!" What? Who said? And the sound guy said, "Somebody said ah during the scene." And I said, "Well, I I didn't do it, and nobody else did." And they said, "Well, okay, let's go back and let's redo it again." And so you know, let's action. And the uh, director was really watching the actors now and, and not the monitor. And uh, all of a sudden, the thing came out and, and, and the scene progressed. And I went, ah! I went, oh, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> you were being the ray gun. Well, I, you know, I was a seven-year-old again. I mean, that's the one thing about acting. And, and, and the other one is quick stories is, is um, I was well trusted uh, by um, the makeup department to always have my teeth. And I only had one pair at the mm -hmm. time. And uh, uh, I was able to bring it home. Everybody else had to pretty much keep it on the set, but but he let me take it home. And and uh, 
I had a dog at home and uh, I got to the set and I get there plenty early and I realized I didn't have my teeth and I went to uh, Michael in uh, uh, Westmore and I said, I, I forgot my teeth. He said, well, how much time do you get? Can you get home and back in uh, 45, 50 minutes? I said, oh, sure, sure. But um, so I, I was in full makeup now and then I rushed home and I ran up the hill and I opened the dog. I mean, I opened the door, I gave away, and I opened the door and to get my teeth, and the dog looked at me and went, <laughs> true story. Anyway, I got my teeth and ran away. Dog was never. <laughs> and, and, and did, they, did they make duplicates after that, just in case? <laughs> I, yes, I did get duplicates <laughs> after that. Yeah. I only ever had one set of teeth, and, and I got to take mine home. I well, think, there you, you have know, Wait, I, I, yes, boys are not as careful with their toys as girls are. Girls can be this, trusted. This with is them. true. This is true. Speaking of I Reagan, broke, I broke a lot of my sister's dolls. Yes. Speaking of Reagan, it was the time Mister, as in former President Reagan, yeah. came to the set, and uh, um, alas, I did not. I didn't manage to meet him, but poor Barbara, who had a really hard time sitting down because of the structure of her costume, was right. all. She got the opportunity to meet him, but I, alas, did not. So not so crazy, but interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had no, I had no idea he visited the set. Yeah, he was a big Mac yeah. fan. He was, oh, he was really no. big. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, he was a Klingon fan, as was everybody else who isn't everybody had good faith. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so I remember. I remember Dan Quayle recorded a message during like Trek's like and one of the anniversary specials, and I was like, "Dan Quayle, really? Hey, Star Trek is great, and keep up." It's like, okay. How did he spell it? <laughs> exactly <laughs> with two C's and a Q. <laughs> who was that? Who was that uh, genius that visited your your set? I can't think of his name. Oh, Hawking. Stephen yeah. Hawking visited. Stephen you. Hawking's wanted a, a picture with. I actually have have the picture. I don't have it here, but but uh, he wanted a picture with a Klingon, and and Worf was not on the set. I was the only Klingon uh, on the next stage, sound stage, and they asked permission to come over to for a picture with me and and Hawking's, and and I said sure, yeah, wow, wow, and um, and uh, uh, but Klingons were his favorite. Uh, aliens, and wow. he was a huge Star Trek fan because he was filming a Star Trek show that day, yeah. and uh, uh, the card game. And um, oh. so, anyway, he came over, and uh, I call it, and I have the picture, and it's called the mathematical genius of the world with the mathematical idiot of the world. Uh, <laughs> it's a wonder. It's a wonder that Jeff Coves didn't slap on a Klingon costume and get him the picture himself. He's such a photo hog. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he's gonna come to your house and punch he's, your right in the nose. <laughs> he's little, but he might be able to he take mighty, he's fast. He's fast. He's mighty. Yeah. Uh, just like that. Yeah. So so Vaughn, what was uh what do you think your craziest day was a set? I mean, and you uh, you were in plenty of them. Yeah. Uh craziest day there were there were plenty of them, but Probably the craziest was the first Cardassian I did, which I did not do correctly. I did him like a Klingon. But uh, I had been doing a play in San Diego at the Old Globe, and they called me and, and wanted me to come and do this uh, uh, show. And I got out of the play at about 11 o'clock. I drove back to L.A. I got there midnight, maybe 12.30. I had a 3.30 call in the morning, oh, wow. so I'm doing my best to get a couple of hours sleep, you know, and it didn't work. Drove down to the set, hadn't had a, a drop of sleep, and th then that four and a half hours of makeup, I, I'm trying to sleep. I think it was around Thanksgiving. Was, oh, go ahead, sleep, the makeup people were saying, and they're all so wonderful, but they said, we love it when people sleep. And they cranked up the radio and started laughing about their Thanksgivings and doing <laughs> whatever, you know, still no sleep. So I get to the trailer. I lean my head against the wall to try to catch a couple of Z's before they call me and 
Mr. Armstrong, we'd like you on stage nine, please. Oh, okay, let's go. So by this time, I am just too tired to screw up. I don't give a damn what's about to happen. I'm, I, you know, and I did not miss a single line. I didn't say him right, but the fact <laughs> that I didn't miss a single line kind of screwed up the captain. And he was missing all of his lines at first. <laughs> and, and so uh, finally I missed one on purpose to see if that would help. And it did. He quit screwing up then. After I messed up, he was okay. So oh, that was kind of the craziest. Wow. wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. DS9, oh, that was uh, the character of Goldenar. <laughs> Uh, what? That was the character of Golden Goldenar. That was the character's name. Oh. That was that one you played. Yeah, Golden R. I thought you said Golden R. No, no, no. no. What the hell is a Golden R? No, no, no. Golden R. Golden R. That was it. He was way too angry. Way too angry. Who? Golden R. <laughs> well, uh, and you say you play like a click. It's interesting because you. Uh, your appearance on Next Gen as as Klingon Captain Chorus, that was the first Klingons we had seen outside of Worf, and that sort of set it up in terms of, okay, this is kind of the direction that we're going to go in for all the Trek permutations. So that was, you uh, you, you were kind of a pivotal pivotal role in Klingon uh, entomology, for, uh, for lack of a better term. What they tell me, it uh, led to a lot of other things with them, <laughs> you know, which was nice. <laughs> Eventually, I ended up doing 12 characters, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They made yeah. me audition for the first six or so, but after that, they'd just call and say, uh, you want to do this, Vaughn? You want to save this, Vaughn? <laughs> Whatever. So was one one Klingon who they... Else? What's that? Have you done more characters than anybody else on the show? I yes. think so. Yeah. I have. Well, yeah. sounds good to beat. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> how many have you done, JG? How you're many have you done? You know you're wrong. Yeah, how many have you done? I'm that lie all over the internet. It's, I've done it's, 12. It's how many me, have you done? I've done 14. Well, it's, I've done 15. I did 17. I've done 20 different characters. Uh, Vaughn has done one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Not including uh, the mirror, mirror version of Armstrong. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 of, of, of the other character. Twelve. Yeah. I've done twelve. Some people say it's thirteen, but it's not because one character was the same guy as the other. The board. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. uh, mine is twenty-six inches long. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Which character was uh, your dad? <laughs> We're sorry, Glenn. <laughs> it's hard to do it. All right, gentlemen. We I had to get something in there, you know. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. We don't I've need only to... done two characters or three. <laughs> but you did them beautifully. And they're for Thank you. Thank and yours you. lasted for years. Thank Mine you. lasted yeah. for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are going to go to audience questions, so let's go ahead and switch over to them. And we're going to start off with from Lisa, also known as number one Trek fan. She comes to a lot of our online Q and A's. What do you draw on in yourself when playing these warrior roles? My innate bad humor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Really? It just kind of allows you to all the things that piss you off in life that you generally are too polite to say anything about. That 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 little kernel can can flower. It's so right. Yeah. Every management problem that I have. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you asking all of us? Yeah, yeah. It's for everybody. Yep. Oh. Uh, well, part of mine was I wasn't that far out of Vietnam. So it was, uh, you know, maybe eight years, 10 years. I forget exactly what it was, but uh, I thought, damn it, man, if you don't get this, just quit, <laughs> you know? So that and the, uh, the fact that the director, and I forget his name, though he became a very successful director. He directed the movie of X-Files and all of that. But uh, anyway, he said, I want these guys to be the bikers of the universe. <laughs> so wow. I combined that with the soldier, and I guess I got the guy. You know? Yeah. 
Masters of the Universe. That's good. That is good. With me, with me it was, it was um, uh, I was doing uh, Edmund in King Lear, and uh, I got the role, and uh, Jonathan Frakes was directing, and, and he said, uh, um, do the eye thing, you know, which I had inadvertently done during the audition where I got angry, and if I get angry, I guess my eyes pop out of my head. And, uh, uh, and um, you know, it's just, uh, and he said, do that all the time. And uh, I, I think it worked, you know, uh, time will tell, but uh, it did work, I think. And, um, yeah. uh, and, and I really just put a lot of Edmund into that character. And when you sit, I think we all have this experience. When you sit in a makeup chair and you sit there for four hours, you know, and it's four o'clock in the morning. By the time you're done, you look angry, you feel angry, and you're ready to be angry, angry, angry. And the makeup helps you and the teeth helps you because you are angry. Yeah. yeah. Makeup is very important. You're right. I watch it every minute, you know, if I'm not yeah. sleeping, which I yeah. realized you can't do. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I had this thing on, on my... Uh, my head and I, I thought what gives him what in his evolutionary process gives him this and why and i figured you know as he was growing up he was in the backyard button heads with a goat you know? <laughs> so that's what they do to practice they butt heads with something and then that was another weapon so well, that might have might been the pain stick you know, you know, hitting each other's children with pain sticks on the forehead. You know, it's a real pain stick. You know. Could have been, could have been. Plenty to hit. Well, you guys know I, he has triplets. Did you guys yeah, know that? Well, ask them. They got those same yes. bumps. Did you know he had triplets? <laughs> uh, so, JG, what? Uh, how do you wrap your head around uh, being a Klingon? The head is the right idea. The. Uh, um, I've always said the Klingons are basically more than Vaughn. You said they're uh, what was the, the example there? The best description of a Klingon culture is what you just said it. Bikers, like, in space. bikers of the universe. Bikers space. Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with that. It's linebackers in space. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was a linebacker in college, and the, I had no. I had no noticeable athletic skill. I just really in, loved to run as hard as I could into the backfield hit as many people with my forehead as I could and uh, and then do it again. And I think- That explains everything. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you got a, a concussion. Yeah. Well, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had the CT, uh, I, know, I can't remember what that last letter is. CT no, scan. I, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, yeah, they're a race of linebackers. And that's, a, it's controlled frenzy. Linebacking is controlled frenzy. You've got to be able to be frenzied, but know when to stop. Klingons have an idea when they maybe want to stop. Sometimes they can't, but, mm. that's really it. but it's frenzy. No. See, the man's in a football uniform. Can you oh, imagine yeah. that coming at you? Oh, yeah. No, that, yeah. Was, uh, that was 44. That, I don't know where that uniform came from. It, and it's a green. It, I think it's green. You know. That was in 44? Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that, that's when we were doing um, uh, Klingon rap. You know? yeah. That's our rap stage. Oh, you know? right. right. Zip, tip, right. nut, something. Everybody asks yeah. us, what is the matter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a Klingon, baby. The Klingons. Ain't no Klingons, baby. Where the Klingons? Johnson. You don't want to hear that again because, yeah. you know, there are 44 verses. Bob and I usually do three on stage, but yeah. we can do all 44 if you'd like. <laughs> maybe at the end. Maybe, maybe <laughs> later. <laughs> when, we, when, we when, yeah. we, when, we, when we finally get you on one of our physical stages here at GalaxyCon, we'll do the whole thing. How's that? Because that's something I, that's something I got to see live. Question, your physical stages. Where where Do you have a physical stage? Are you planning something? Oh, we just did our, our show in uh, Raleigh uh, uh, about uh, three weeks ago and had great success. And uh, we were, we were, everything was compliant with protocols and safety and went I over could, very, very well. So hopefully next year we'll be back to 
Raleigh and a couple Raleigh, other locations. Uh, hopefully, Raleigh, so. North Carolina. Yeah, Patty, I, I oh, got to okay. say, right now you look like you're in the bedroom you grew up in. Well, I am in my I am in my bedroom. They sent me this when we started doing this a year and a half ago. With these, the as I joke, it looks like a television studio threw up in my bedroom. <laughs> uh, so Vaughn had sort of nailed it. Uh, it looks yeah. like your bedspread is up there on the wall. <laughs> yeah, it does. We've been thinking about making a suit uh, out of this pattern for me for our stage when I do the costume contest, but we'll, we'll get away. But Lisa. At least, it, at least the cape. At least the cape. That's that's money. That's a money idea, Pat. We can start jumping off five-story buildings. All right. I'll start, I'll start cutting it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Lisa, thank you. Great question to start us off with. And uh, what do we have next? Here's one from Susanna. If you would you travel in space if you could? Why not? I, I want to stay there, but you know what we've seen recently with Bezos uh, and whatnot. Yeah. Sure, the, the quick I'm with you. Center, I mean, I frankly don't think I can afford it, but if someone offered it to me, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. up and back, yeah, I wouldn't want to stay there either. I mean, this uh, is a pretty nice looking planet. I'd well, rather be here than say on the moon, yeah, or Mars. Well, I'd like you, you know. to stay there if you could. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you. You know, if they serve the uh. Vodka martini before we took off, maybe, maybe. Okay, with what's, three olives. What's going on with the whole? Not the Bezos thing, but the other one. The uh, uh, they went out of their airspace. They were Branson. they were supposed Branson. to be in their certain airspace, and they went out of it. Wait a minute! They're going up to space in a rocket, and they 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 warped over to their out of their space, and they're being investigated. No, no, I don't think. Well, you might call it investigation, but they wanted to know why it happened. Because, be, and the reason I surmise is there might be something, you know, going down or coming up at the same time, and they can't take a, uh, afford to have that happen continuously. So they made them. Come they back. might run into you, JG, in a bad mood. Well, they come back. Yeah. Just coming back in from from well, outer space. The pilots got it back on course within seconds, but you know. Well, they still have to find out how why it happened. Uh, you're a stickler for details. Uh, <laughs> you know? well, I had to run an empire for ten years. You had to run it for one minute. You know. What, what can I tell you? <laughs> oh, Susanna, there you go. F you, Bob. <laughs> Uh, thank you. So that was Susanna. What do we have next? Here's one from Madison who wants to know, do you have a line from the show that stands out to you to this day? Yes. Perhaps, but not today. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, there you go. Which show? I think <laughs> my slag of of the absolute absolutely beautiful Gates when I said human females are so repulsive, which was completely untrue in that circumstance. <laughs> I have a favorite thing that that you did was was with Patrick's. Um, oh, the head yeah. with the nails. I just I adore. I howled when I saw that. I just howled. Yeah, I still yeah. I well, you know, I really liked his head. And the first day I was in set, before we did that scene, I remember going, wow, I'm really fascinated by his head. And so I just managed to find, it just looked so pretty. And it was so yes. smooth. Yeah, and, yeah. and so I just managed, so that was more Gwyneth than, than Bator. Gwyneth wanted so you, to do that, so you, Bator pulled it off for her. Yeah. You caressed it? Are you well? Scratched? Kind of, yes. It was with, the, with her nails. I just going, sort of put yeah. my. I kind of did that. It was. Oh, it was one yeah. of those. You wow. know, kind of a little bit of a scrape and a little bit of a stroke, <laughs> halfway in between the two. It was called play on massage. There you go. Yeah, yeah, play on massage. Do you still use the same hair conditioner uh, that you did the other? Oh, stop! <laughs> I'm not going there. I'm not going there. <laughs> That's an on stage joke. If they, it, it's over my head, but you know, I remember. Uh, Klingons do not have a safe word. Uh, Vaughn, they got a. Uh, <laughs> do uh, 
Is there a line from uh, any of your characters that stands out? Any of my characters? Well, yeah. Well, uh, one of the Klingons, I guess it was Korath in the uh, uh, the Vegas version, you know, the ride in Vegas. Uh, yeah. Korath. He, he came back at the end of Voyager to be a, a, a mad scientist in a cave, but he said, and I'm sure many of you may have said this, Today is a good day to die, which I'm not sure is, uh, sure is true about any day. But then uh, um, also on Enterprise, said to Scott in the first episode, the pilot, I just looked at him and I said, don't screw this up. <laughs> good advice that, for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was uh, the most memorable line for me. Yeah. Oh, and I have one cling online. I think it it either means let's do this or let's get the hell out of here. And it's Riario. And then who who is it that all sends stuff asking for information? The, what what's the museum in Washington? What is it? Is the Smithsonian? Uh, 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 what, say, uh, oh, the Air and the Air and uh, the Air and Space Museum. Smithsonian. 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 Yeah. They they were putting together something with the Klingon language. And they sent me a letter saying, do you have anything to add to this? And that's the only thing I had, because it's the only thing I knew that meant something. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fair. <What? laughs> JG, any of, uh, any, of, any of the general's uh, uh, lines that uh, still resonate with yeah, you? Yeah, the, the one, I think, I don't know if it was, I think it was finally, it was cut uh, from the final script, but one of the... Uh, I was talking to Worf, and Worf says, but that is not the Klingon way. And I said, Worf, anything a Klingon does is the Klingon way. Oh. And uh, I like I that. It was kept. Good line. Oh, uh, like yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. The other one was, uh, the one I remember it was when you said, go figure, within Klingon. Oh, uh, the last line in the show that I had was... Uh, it was, I asked a, a fan, uh, Chuck Abernathy, who's I've directed years and years ago. I love the man. I said, Chuck, how, can you translate humans? Uh, can you uh, translate humans? Go figure. And he said, Human Pak Kajijaj. And it was my last line. And I said, it's got to be in Klingon. So that's what I, but it means humans. It was when we were drinking blood wine and celebration. Yeah. And, of defeating the Cardassian, the, the Dominion, everybody. <clears throat> yeah, and I think that was when he poured it out. He was just like, exactly. I, I, yeah, the Admiral was like, oh, I don't feel like this. It's oh, like, he's too proud to drink. Yes, we just. Oh, he was just like, oh, this has been too much loss. It's like, right, right. As yeah. a human, I was offended. I was like, come on, dude, we, we won. <laughs> so, has anyone ever conflated the Cardassians and the Kardashians? Are there any gifts about that? The who? The Cardassians. And then the Kardashians, those so one is a one is a reptilian armadillo species, and the other one is uh, aliens on Star Trek. Oh, <laughs> I just wondered whether they sort of put their <laughs> head types onto Chloe or Kim or whatnot. Oh, no, they should. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, someone should be doing that. I never even thought. I, well, I, I didn't think of it until you guys said Kardashian, and then I, I don't know, watch it either. So. What, what was I've the never lawyer's watched name? That show, so what I know was, nothing. What was the lawyer's name? Their dad is it? Kirk Kardashian? No, Robert. No. Robert Kardashian. That's the first one I read. Yeah, he was the attorney in the in one of that trial. Yeah. yeah, and let's roll another one. And oh. this one comes from. <laughs> oh, oh, he's an inhuman monster, and the other is from <laughs> that's very good. Very good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and here's one from PZDS9 Converts. Oh, you made me really write this out there. What is a Star Trek episode that you wish your character had been on? Hmm. Wow. Oh, I, I know. I know. I know. JG? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would have been great, huh? With See the picture on the bottom? 
Yeah. I don't know if I can get that much closer. Uh, Uncle Frank. Yeah. Uncle yeah. Frank, and it was the uh, it was the black on the left, white on the right. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. What was if, the name of it? If, I always forget if, the name. If that if, if that be your last battlefield. Yes, because that was my favorite show ever of Star Trek, and I was an original fan of Star Trek, and and we got to meet him, and uh, oh. and JG got a signed picture autograph. Oh wow! I yeah. Yeah. I am and, envious. Uh, he was. I, I grew up watching him on Ed Sullivan, for heaven's sake. You know, he was. Then he was the Joker, and then he then he was on Star Trek, which that's got to be the most what uh, um, iconic. Iconic is yeah. The best. Yeah. Of all the episodes of what a thousand? <clears throat> how many episodes of Star Trek has there been? Probably it's, around it's a thousand. thousand. Pretty close. Yeah. Oof. A hundred a hours, maybe more. You know. Yeah. But yeah. that's to me that's the most iconic show ever because of the period of time it was done, the metaphor enlisted yeah. in it, and yeah. um, uh, and and. That's just the brilliance of the directing and the writing in it. And, and the I mean, we went through uh, that. This this uh, billowed up uh, Star Trek in the mid to late '60s, and what a time that was in this country! All these yeah. things were happening. Yeah, we yeah. didn't know because we were 16, 17, 18. You were in Vietnam, is that right, Vaughn? When when were you there? I was there from '71 to '72. 71, wow. 72. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And I'm saying and you were there towards the end. Uh, yes. Yeah. I was there towards the end. Drafted oh, out of a full asked, scholarship, by the way. You must have thoughts about what, what went down in Afghanistan that are perhaps a little more on point than the rest of us. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I mean, how did that happen? You got drafted out of a scholarship to college. Well, Nixon uh, thought that it was unfair that only the rich white kids who could go to college was getting out of Vietnam, was getting out of the draft. So then he stopped the student deferment and everybody got drafted. Uh, with the oh, you were, you were, yeah. what, that, and he was right, actually. He was correct. What, that, what, what he didn't take into consideration was the poor white kids who happened to get a full scholarship, <laughs> you know. My uh, my, my father was in the same position. He was he was in college and he still got called up. Ah, so how old yeah. you were you on a number draft? Yeah, fifty. Yeah, that's how you got drafted. Yeah. Oh, oh your lottery honor. number was fifty. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, my number was, got into school right after I went. To, oh shit! Yeah, yeah. yeah. My number was three forty. Oh. That's better than uh, mine's three twenty two. And I, that was, I thought I was the luckiest one I'd ever met. Yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. luckiest. I'd hang on to that number. I, yeah. I have. I've had 322 three is the luckiest uh, number you ever saw. Yeah. Uh, so, well, Vaughn, is there, uh, is there an episode of Star Trek you think that uh, you would have loved to have popped in on that you were aware of? Well, I've only seen the ones I'm on, so I don't know. And that's fair. <laughs> That's that's fair. I, this, this is a bit of a loaded kidding. question. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, it, it would have been the pilot for the original Star Trek. Yes, uh, Star Trek. The pilot. Pilot. What was the, the name of that show? What? The what? show. The pilot. The pilot was shot, and then everything. Everybody was sent home except uh, except Nimoy and Shatner. Yeah, and Jeffrey the, Hunter died. died. Well, said everything. There's the the cage, which was the pilot with uh, Jeffrey Hunter, and right. had Nimoy and uh, Major Barrett was on it, and then they told Roddenberry, "This isn't gonna work. You got you got to get you got to get you either get rid of the guy with the pointed ears or get rid of the woman who's in charge because that's not gonna fly." So that's why Major became the nurse that he decided he was gonna invest in Nimoy and make it. The two. But those were the two arguing points. That's why I thought it was weird. Oh. Major Barrett's second in command. You know the the lady character ends. The network was like, "Oh, we, 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 Middle America won't accept that," which wow. is my wow, point. wow, wow. I didn't yeah. know that. And in life. Yeah, wow. and then the, in, in the show and in life. Yeah. <laughs> <It's pretty laughs> Did you know that that uh, she was sent down, sent home for being female? I didn't either. No. Yeah. So he gave, gave yeah. You know, so he created the role of Nurse Chapel for her, and then she stayed in the show, and and then she she was wonderful as Luaxana on Next Generation. I thought that was a role that she, she was great. And the voice of the computer, wasn't she? Yes. Also yep. the voice of the computer the whole time. Yep. It, it sounds so. They said we did this for you. 
<laughs> Wait a minute. Roddenberry wrote the damn thing, you know? <laughs> what are those people up there in the suits doing? <laughs> uh, crazy. So, uh, Gwyneth, was there, an, was there anything? I don't know. I mean, I'm having, I'm having trouble with that. I'm having trouble thinking of where I would put Bator. If you're just asking me, I mean, I'd agree the, the early, uh, episodes. I loved, I loved the Tribble episode. I, uh, and I'm trying imagine a Klingon with all those Tribbles. I mean, there might be some interesting <laughs> stuff there, but basically it's also because I never managed to meet Leonard Nimoy in wow. all of the times our paths never crossed. So <laughs> any episode that he was in, plop me in and I would have been happy. What what if it had been revealed that Tribbles, they react negatively to Klingons, but what if it had been revealed that they only do it with male Klingons? What if they were okay with female Klingons? Well, you see, yes. Think of think of all of the possibilities and a whole different side to the characters. Mm -hmm. That's, hey. that's kind of true of Dotsons. They're not that good with men at first, but uh, I know I have Are you saying or dachshunds? Uh, the a, car uh, or the dog? The dog. The dog. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I, have, I thought you meant the, do the car. Ah, uh, uh, Dotson. Ah, uh, Dotson. Uh, what troubles have you had with a Dotson lately? <laughs> we are in my dog. Who are you? <laughs> Vaughn, I had a dachshund, and I'm thinking, yeah, you know, Vaughn's right about that. I, I had a one, of, one of my dogs is, uh, is what they call I a Chulini. I love that car. I kept <laughs> kicking it. it yeah. Chulini, it's half dachshund and half uh, a, a Chihuahua. They call it is a it Chihuahua. A Chihuahua? Uh, yeah, a Chihuahua or a Chihuini. A Chihuini. Yeah. 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 dog. We are learning and, a lot here today. And, what? She loves men. I mean, she loves women. We got her about a year ago. It took her almost three weeks to, you know, to warm up to me. And well, a, lot of, a lot of dogs don't like men at first. Well, that's and, yes. Like and one wonders you know, why. Perhaps they, they know something. There's an aggression. I think that they smell in men, you know, that they don't smell in women. You know, that's my own theory. Well, well, maybe you can take it or leave it. Just go. This this is why I'm a cat man. And PZ DS9 convert. <laughs> great question. I think we have time for one more. Let's see if we got a really fun one. And this is gonna come from uh, the fans. Oh. What all forty four oh, verses? Oh, forty four <laughs> verses. Oh, uh, you're in trouble, JG. You're in trouble. Okay. You're in trouble. Okay. You know? Every, okay. Here we go. Bob, is uh, it my cocktail hour yet? Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it is if you do all 44. Vaughn and I will have a nap. Do a name, yeah. uh, an email address, Patty. I'll send the, the verses to that person. Oh, all, right. Okay. Yeah. all right. All right. Well, can you, can, you give us, can you give us like three or four? Can you give us like a Costanza? Uh, a Costanza? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, let, JG, let's start the song anyway. But you, you guys start. Us, what is the matter? The ratings, the action. Even the babies are getting flatter. It's the Klingons, baby. The Klingons. The Klingons. Ain't, ain't, ain't no Klingons, baby. baby. We're the Klingons. Now, Enterprise ain't running, and no episodes are shooting. Yeah, ain't no bridge, bridge on the bridge. No, the bridge. Oh, yeah. It's part of that loser. Trek without Klingons. Oh. What would they be thinking? Why not without, without blood? And they even with the dripping. If there's a problem, uh, we'll, 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 we'll resolve it. You kill them all first. That's the only way to solve it. It's playing on, baby. You're playing on. Ain't no playing on, baby. Founders, Dominion, even if you Borg, ain't nothing next to us. Who won that freaking war? We out. We out. That's one word. Bravo. Yeah, that's a half of it. It's a fan favorite. I understand why. I, our timing is is warped because we're, we're in warpers, whatever that is. It is that. Right uh, yeah. that oh, it doesn't sink real well on Zoom. Yeah. Oh, guys, it's been an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we take our leave? Re audio. Goodbye. Prosper. Live long and prosper. Today is a good day for you to die. <laughs> <laughs> it has been my honor to serve you all today here at the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you to our audience for joining us. And thank you for your great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. And remember, kapla. Thank you, Trekkers.